John chapter number 11, if you'll look with me in verse number 1, the Bible says, Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Verse number 5, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you'll help us tonight, Lord, as we open up your word. God, we've already been able to read a few verses, and we thank you for your scripture. I thank you, God, for my Bible, Lord, that I have, that I can open. I thank you for this place I can come to and preach your word, and I can worship you. God, I'm thankful for these people that are here tonight. Lord, no doubt many of them are tired. God, it's halfway through the week. But I pray, God, that you'll be a blessing to us with your word. Help us, God. Hide me behind the cross. Lord, may they not see me. But, God, I pray that they'll hear the word of God tonight. Lord, would you speak through us, through your word, and help us. God, give us liberty and help us, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we see here in the Bible in John chapter number 11, it tells us about a certain man who was sick. So, first of all, we see in verse number 1, we see three people the Bible talks about. We have three siblings. We have Mary, we have Martha, and we have Lazarus. I know on down in the chapter we see a miracle that happens, but I want to see the first miracle Tonight, in verse number 1, the Bible says that the two siblings, the sisters, had a sick brother, and they loved him. You know, the Bible doesn't say they loved him specifically, but they, you know they did because they wanted him to get help. So they sent for Jesus so that Lazarus could get some help. So we see that really the first miracle here is the love among siblings. We live in a world nowadays where it's hard to even love your family, it seems like. Y'all might as well say amen. I ain't going to stay on this very long. Y'all help me. I got family too, Amen. We see these three siblings that love each other. We see the love that's here and the miracle in that, what we see now. If you don't think that there's a, if you think that there's a lot of love in the world, there's not a lot of love in the world. There's so much hate in this world that we live in. I see so much hate every day. I hear about it every day. And if you don't believe me, when you leave here, go get on the highway here in just a minute. Don't get up to speed real quick and see if somebody don't show you their tall finger on the highway. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they're not telling you you're number one, by the way. They're telling you they don't agree with what you're doing on the road. It's pitiful. It's so sad, this world we live in. Somebody will pull up beside you now and show you a gun. They'll throw a gun up at you. People are getting killed because they didn't, didn't agree with the way somebody drove. There is hate in this world that we live in. We see, first of all, right here in the Bible, the love that these sisters had for Lazarus. Thank God for the love that we can have for each other. The Bible says in 1 John 4 and verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. We got to have love in this world we live in, but we can't love the whole world if we don't even love our family. That's all right. I got family too. I, I love them, but I don't like some of them. I'll just be honest with you. It's hard to like some of the things they do. Uh, I'll just leave it right there. I don't think I ought to go any further with that. There's some things that are going on, though, that I just don't agree with and people that I'm related to. I just can't line up with it. I don't line up. If they don't line up with the Word of God, I can't hang around them. That's the bottom line. That don't mean I don't love them. I love them, but I ain't going to hang around them because they don't line up with, with my Bible, amen, and what the Word of God says. But I do love them. We ought not hate them, amen? I don't hate nobody, praise God. And ain't, by the way, there ain't nobody in this building, and I can say this on a Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, that I can't speak to. And if you're here and I can't speak to you and I don't know about it, come and talk to me. There ought not be nobody in here that I cannot be able to speak to. That's, hey, that's how we can really, we really want revival. We really want to worship God. We talk about how we want revival. Well, why can't we all speak to each other? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know why the Lord told me. I ain't got that wrote down, but he told me to say that, so I'm going to say it. I know he put it on my heart. But I'm telling you, if we want real revival, we will love one another. We see, first of all, the miracle of love in the first part of this chapter. We see the hate that's in the world today. We know that the, the devil, if he can start in our home, and if he can take the love out of our home, what's he going to do to the church? He'll start in the home. What's going on in your home tonight? Is there love in our homes tonight? Do we all have love when we go home? 
Are we going to be able to even talk to one another? Do we have problems at the home place? I don't know. I don't know anything. I'm just saying it's what the Lord laid on my heart. But we got to love one another. We need love in our home. The devil could tear down the home. He could tear down the church. And that's where he's going to start. He's going to start at home. What's going on in our homes tonight? When we leave this place, do we act the same way when we get home as we act while we're here? If not, something's wrong. We need to do some, some confessing up. We need to get right with God. So we see the miracle of love here. Then we see second of all the sickness of Lazarus. The Bible tells us that Lazarus was sick even unto death. But the, I mean, the Bible says in verse number four, the sickness is not unto death, but we know that later he did die. We see uh, the sickness that Lazarus had was probably, I don't know, it doesn't say exactly what he had. He, he probably had a bacterial infection, something like sepsis or something like that. But we know that he did die later on in the chapter. We see... Uh, the sickness here of the world that we live in. I believe y'all can agree that we live in a sick world nowadays in more ways than one. The Bible's talking about an illness of sickness of Lazarus here, but I'm talking about the world we live in today and how sick it is and how perverse and how vile, how wicked it is. Uh, I was listening to Brother Roloff. I think it was the family altar program this week. Now, Brother Roloff, I believe he died in 1982. 1982, I believe it was December of 1982. So we're talking about this message that he preached probably could have been even in the 70s. I don't remember. Uh, I wasn't born then. I was actually born in 82. I was nine months old when Brother, Bo when Brother Roloff uh, died. I was nine months old. But he was preaching about how the church had accepted homosexuality. The church of the world, if you will, had accepted homosexuality. How they no longer would condemn it, but they would condone it. And he just couldn't believe it. He was appalled. This great man of God was appalled at the things that he heard back in the 70s and early 80s. Look at what we're dealing with today. God, help us. We still see that there is still sickness in the world today. If you're not careful, that sickness, that, that homosexuality will be right in front of your living room and you won't even realize it. Ain't it something? You don't even have to watch a filthy program. You could be watching a ball game. They're going to throw it on a commercial on you. They're going to force that junk in your life. And what are we going to do about it? I ain't going to stand for it. I don't agree with it. I ain't going to condone it. It is condemned, and I don't agree with it. And we ought to stand up and say, we ain't going to stand for it, praise God. But not only that, the sickness of homosexuality, now we live in a world that they, they tell us these, we have adults, teachers teaching children that it's okay. You can be whatever you want to be. That's all right. We're talking about adults that are teaching children, that are teaching children that it's okay. You can be what you want to be. I remember being taught that I could be what I want to be too when I was growing up. But I never thought about being a girl. I mean, we used to have that saying, be all you can be in the army. Y'all remember that? I mean, that's as close as we got. I never one time, my mama didn't put dresses on me. God help us if there's mothers putting dresses on little boys. And whatever you would do to make a girl be a boy, I don't even, I don't want to think about it. I don't understand it. I don't get it. What are we, what, what, this is just a sickness that we see in this world that we live in. Now you have this gender thing that's going on. And then I even heard of a woman marrying her dog. Have y'all, have y'all heard that? I mean, I don't, Lord help. I don't even know what to say. I don't, I'm glad I don't understand it because I guess I'd be a part of it. But I just don't understand it. We see a sickness here. Lazarus was sick with an illness, but we see a sickness here in the world that we live in, and God can take care of everything. God is the one. Jesus, praise God, is what we need. I'm glad, thank God, we could call on him tonight, and he could supply our every need, and he could do everything for us. So we see the sickness of Lazarus and the sickness of the world we live in today. Also, I want us to see the presence of the Lord that was desired by his sisters. Let's look here, if you will, in verse number three. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. We see the presence of the Lord desired by his sisters. They knew what needed to be done in order for Lazarus to be healed. But do you know in the Bible they don't say, they didn't send a messenger saying, Lord, would you heal Lazarus? No, they just said, Lord, he's sick. Because they knew and they were close enough to God, they knew that God would know what needed to be done. Aren't you glad, thank God, tonight you can call on God? You don't need a messenger. We don't, I don't have to call on a messenger to go get God for me. 
I can, call, I can call on God by myself right now. I called on God this morning. I called on him this afternoon. I hope I'm going to call on him tomorrow if I wake up in the morning. I don't need anybody else to call on God for me. I'm so glad, thank God, I ain't got to go stand in front of a, 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 a peephole and, and look at a, a pope and tell him what I've done and he can go confess something for me. One guy said he was looking through a knot hole looking at a nut. I'm so glad, thank God, I can go straight to the Father. Amen. We see the sisters here that desired the presence of the Lord. Do we desire the presence of the Lord tonight? When we come here this afternoon, before we do we make preparations on the way to church? God, would you meet with us tonight? Lord, you know it's, it's a shame if we meet here and we don't feel the presence of God. You know, when we come in, he comes with us. He's in our heart. I heard about a little girl. Uh, she asked her mama, she said, Jesus... Jesus says, God's big enough, he holds the whole world in his hand, don't he? She said, yes, honey, he's big enough, he holds the whole world in his hand. And uh, she said, well, well, doesn't he live inside my heart too? She said, yes, honey, he lives inside your heart. She said, well, if he's that big, won't he be poking out every once in a while? I'm glad, thank God, I feel him poking out every once in a while. Hey, he pokes out every once in a while, and I feel something, praise God. It's not emotionalism that I feel. It's happiness, and it's joy that I feel because Jesus is inside of my heart. Amen. We see the presence of the Lord that is desired by the sisters. We see, if you look on down, that Jesus, the Bible said, Jesus abode two days after he heard. Look at verse number six with me, if you will. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place, where he was. You know, I'm glad, thank God, Jesus knows what's going on. God has got everything under control. He ain't worried about nothing. He ain't up, up in heaven chewing on his fingernails. He ain't upstairs eating roll aids and drinking Maalox, praise God. Hey, he ain't worried about nothing because he knows everything. Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, and the Bible says he abode two more days. He stayed there two more days. He wasn't worried about a thing. Why did he stay there two more days? The Bible tells us that if we look on down plainly. The Bible says, when thou heard, when Jesus heard that he said, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. We see the glory of God. Why did Jesus wait? Because he knew what was going to happen. He already knew what was going on. He knows everything. I'm glad, thank God, that we have a Savior on high that knows everything that we're facing tonight. So many of you in here could be faced with so many different uh, uh, situations in this building tonight, but God is in control. God knows everything, and God's going to pull us through. Just hang on, Christian friend. I'm telling you that Jesus is going to take care of us. I know that he will, because he always has. He'll never leave me, nor forsake me. I'm glad, thank God, that he saved my soul, and not only did he save me, but he sealed me, praise God. I'm glad, thank God, also, he will go where no one else will go. Look at this, verse number 6. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Verse 7. Then after that, said he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. Verse 8 says, His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again. If we look back in, verse, in uh, chapter number 10 and verse number 39, the Bible says, Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. The disciples said, Lord, why do you want to go back there? They're trying to kill you. Why in the world do you want to go back where they're trying to kill you? Why would Jesus go back somewhere where they're trying to kill him? He knew what was going to eventually happen, didn't he? He knew, he knew his death would be what we had to have. He had to die. You know, I used to think about the cross of Calvary and the crucifixion. I used, it used to bother me so bad when I see, because you think about, he was on the cross. They ripped his flesh with a cat of nine tails. They beat him. They mocked him. They pierced his hands and his feet with nails. They stabbed him in his side. Blood and water came from his side, the Bible said. I'm glad, thank God, that happened. If that didn't happen tonight, you and I would have no reason to be in this building tonight. We ought to be thankful for the cross of Calvary and what Jesus went through. I'm glad, thank God, that he took my cross and went up Calvary's hill. I'm glad, thank God, tonight that I could stand here and tell you that he lives on high and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Thank God, make an intercession for you and I. So why would Jesus go somewhere that nobody else would go? Do you, know, do you know that God will go everywhere that nobody else can go for you? Do you know no matter what you're facing tomorrow, no matter what you're going to go through, he's already been there. 
He already knows. He's waiting ahead of time, and he's going to be there for you, just like he was this last time when he pulled you through. Jesus is going to be there for you next time. For the sake of time, I've got to hurry up. Let's move along. We see, look with me in verse number 23 in John chapter 11, verse 23. The Bible says, Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. We see the comfort, and the promise and comfort from Jesus in verse number 23. I'm glad, thank God, that he is making promises that he cannot break. He is God, and I cannot lie, he says. And we have comfort in Jesus Christ tonight. I'm glad, thank God, we can come in here, we can glorify, and we can worship the Lord for what he's done for you and I tonight. We ought to just be thankful. We ought to just take a recess and shout about what God's done for us tonight because we are blessed. Hallelujah. Verse number 35, look with me. The Bible says in verse 35, Jesus wept. This is the shortest verse in the Bible, John 11 35, we see the love of the Savior here. You know, when I, when I first read that, I had to do some studying up on that. If you read it real quick and you don't uh, pay attention to what's going on, you'll think Jesus was weeping because Lazarus died. That's not why Jesus was weeping. He already knew and he had said previously early on in the chapter that he was going to be, he would die and be raised to glorify God, did he not? He already said that. So he knew that he was going to be raised again. He wasn't crying because he was dead. Jesus was weeping here because the Bible said that Mary and the other Jews and Martha were weeping. The Bible says that Jesus wept in John eleven thirty five. 35. You know that when you and I hurt, that Jesus hurts. You know that when you and I go through things, Jesus is right there with us to go through those things, and he's there to help us. He don't want to see us uh, uh, hurt because when, when we hurt, Jesus hurts. When we go through things, he's there and he goes through those things with us. I'm glad, thank God, I have a Savior who loves me. I ain't serving some little Buddha. I ain't serving some uh, dead mummy that's in a cave. I ain't serving some, uh, some monument that they've kissed the toe off of. I'm glad, thank God, I serve a risen Savior who lives on high today, thank God. And he loves you and I. And the Bible says here in John 11, 35, that he wept. Why did he weep? Because Mary, Martha, and the Jews were weeping. He was brokenhearted. The Lord knows you. He was brokenhearted. He was hurt because they were hurt. He wasn't worried about death. You know, if you think about it, uh, I ain't worried about where I'm going when I die, and I ain't worried about death, but the dying part does kind of bother me a little bit. You know what I mean? It's the getting there. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I don't want to die, you know, but I'm glad, thank God, I know where I'm going when I do die. And I, want, I don't want to go now because there's so much more I want to do. I failed the Lord, but I'm glad, thank God, he has never failed me. We see verse number 40. Look with me if you will. I've got to hurry. Jesus said unto her, Say I not, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe thou shouldest see the glory of God. I want to see the glory of God. You know every time we come in this building that ought to be on our mind. In the forefront of our mind, the glory of God. We ought to, we ought to want to feel the presence of God every time we come in here. But you know if we got sin in our life and if there's things going on in our life and, and when we come into the house of God we've got to first get rid of, clean up. We've got to come to the altar and clean up. It's, it takes a lot longer for us to see that glory. If we come in clean and throughout the week, if we would live like we should, amen? If we live like we should throughout the week, then when we come to God's house, we can worship him and we can praise him, thank God. I'm glad, thank God, that when Jesus saved my soul that one Friday night in that revival meeting, when he came in and saved my soul, he filled my soul, praise God. I'm glad, thank God, that the Holy Spirit made permanent residence in my life when he moved in, praise God. I'm glad, thank God, that there ain't no room for nothing else. Ain't no room for nothing else. You know, we do a lot of canning at my house. We like to can stuff. And my wife will can stuff. And uh, she'll put them things in that uh, water bath. She'll uh, uh, put them in that water bath, heat them up, and then, you know, you let them cool back down to those things. Will, you ever heard that, that sound before? That, that sound. You know what that means? That's sealed. Y'all know what this is right here? Look at this. I got a jar right here. Let's imagine this is the... This, uh, and I'm not big on using props, but the day we live in, y'all got, I got to keep y'all's attention, amen? Y'all watching? Look, I ain't even shaking, amen? Praise the Lord. Look at this. Man, that sounds good. I think I'll have some of that. 
Look at this, all the way to the top. It's all the way up there. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm going to put that seal on there. I'm going to put this lid on here. And it's full. This is what happens. We are this vessel. This is what happens when we get saved. When the Holy Ghost makes permanent residence in our life, He fills us up. Amen? He fills us up. You remember that day when Jesus filled you up? And you know, there ain't no room for nothing else in here. I can't put nothing else in this jar. It's completely full. There's no room for nothing else. You know, we live in a sick world today. There's all kind of sickness that wants to get inside of here. This is you and I. There's all kind of sickness that wants to get in here and wants to, wants to get in this vessel where it used to be. You remember what God took from you? Hey, I'm glad, thank God he saved me. I'm glad, thank God, that he cleansed me. I'm thankful for what he given, but like that song says, most of all, I want to thank him for what he took from me. Thankful for the things that he took from me. He's been so good to me. Cleared my, cleaned my life up. You know, I tried to clean myself up before I got saved. And all I was was a clean sinner. I still wasn't saved. Went to church my whole life, three times a week, sung in a group. Knew when to shout, knew when to say amen, but I was still lost and dying and going to hell. Never repented of my sins till that one day when Jesus saved my soul and he filled me up. And there was no room for nothing else. Everything else that was in there had to go away. Because when the Holy Spirit lives inside your heart, all that other mess can't fit in there. It won't fit in. You know, you, you, once you're full, you have uh, other stuff come your way. You got bitterness that will come your way. I don't have a whole lot here I can put in here, but you know it. I can't. I can't get nothing else in here. Nothing else will go. It's completely full. I can't put nothing else in here. But you know when that bitterness and hate and envy and strife and gossip, sin comes along, and it pokes at you. You can do some damage to this. I could damage this all I wanted to if I keep hitting on it. I can damage it. I can't get inside of it because it's sealed. I'm glad, thank God, I've been sealed to the day of redemption. Hey, there ain't nothing that could take it away from me. I like that song Miss Lisa sings. There's, there's a record book. My name's been written in. It was recorded when I was born again. No one can blot it out. It's sealed. Hey, it's sealed forevermore. And it's in the book of life kept by the Lord. I'm glad, thank God, that he sealed me to the day of redemption. Nothing else can fit in here, folks. We have no room in our Christian life for anything else except for the Holy Ghost that lives inside of us. You know, I heard of a guy one time that uh, every time he'd go get in the car, he'd go open up the door for Jesus and let him get in on the other side. Well, that's foolish. We don't have to do that. He lives inside our heart. He gets in when I get in. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, I understand what he says. It's a good thought, but he, he, he comes in with us. Hey, and every time we come in this building, ought to be in the forefront of our mind. Ought to be in the forefront of our mind. I've got to move right along. We see, first of all, I want us to see Mary's devotion. Uh, the Bible says, if you'll look with me real quick, uh, in Luke chapter number 10 and verse number 42. Luke chapter 10 and verse 42. The Bible said, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. The Lord says that Mary hath chosen that good part what was that? What part was that that she had chosen? She chose to be around Jesus and focus her center of attention on Jesus and the things of Jesus. She craved spiritual nourishment. That's what Mary craved. We see Mary's devotion here. Do we have that same devotion? Do we crave the spiritual nourishment that we need from the Word of God? Do we constantly crave? Can we not wait to get here on Wednesday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night? Do we crave it? Do we crave the things of God? Do we crave the Word of God? Do we crave being around people who love God? Is that craving and desire in our heart where it should be? Let me ask you that tonight. Do you have the craving? You remember what it was like when you first got saved why is it not like that still today hey I'm talking to myself I'm talking to everybody that's in here if you're a born again child of God believer we ought to still have the same love for Jesus today that we had the day that he saved us nothing ought to get in the way that craving is what Mary had so we see Mary's devotion in Luke chapter 10 and verse 42 we see that she had a she was a wanting servant she had a servant's need what was her need her need 
was that her brother was sick. I'm glad, thank God, when we have a need, we can go to Calvary. Thank God. We see Mary's devotion. Then we see Martha's decision. What was Martha's decision was to make sure everything was set just right. Mary decided in her life, I'm going to be around the feet of Jesus and anything he does... I'm going to be there because I don't want to miss a thing that Jesus does. Martha decided that she wanted to make sure everything was set just right. Everything had to be just right. She was more of a server, wanted to make sure everything was exactly where it needed to be. I'm glad, thank God, that God didn't make us all the same. That would be a terrible, boring world if we were all the same. Amen? I wish y'all would be more like me. (laughs) Hey, you either love them or you hate them. That's all I can say. It's all right, though. I think it's kind of funny, too. I'm glad I could be the uh, everybody's joke. Amen, Brother Mark? I owe you one. <clears throat> we see here Mary's devotion and Martha's decision. They were two different. The Bible, Jesus doesn't say nothing about Martha and that she was bad and what she believed and what she did and how she lived. She just said that what Mary did... He said that what Mary did was, uh, the Bible says, was more uh, of a good part. She desired to be around Jesus. She had that spiritual craving. I'm glad, thank God, there are so many different people that want to do the will of God and work for God and do different things. We can't all do the same thing, amen? Thank God for sound men. You know, the sound men always, everybody looks at them first, like, what's going on? Sound men never get no recognition. Y'all doing a fine job, guys, amen? Thank God for a wonderful piano player and an organ player. Thank God for the people that we have here that drive buses, that go on visitation. Hey, we can't all do the same thing. If God's got a place for every one of us, if all you do is fill a pew, thank God for you. I wish you'd do more, amen? But thank I'm serious. Thank God for you. Somebody's got to fill a pew. Thank God. There, there's, there's no doubt that we all have different things that we can do, and it's for the Lord. Maybe we should be doing more. I believe that we can never do enough for God. But we see Mary's devotion, Martha's decision, and we see a man's death. If you'll look with me in verse number 14. Turn with me to verse number 14 real quick. John chapter 11, verse 14. Then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. So we see here uh, that Jesus had to explain to them. He, he told them he was sleeping but they didn't understand what he was trying to tell them. He said, look, he's dead, okay? He's dead. I need to go help him. So we see the man's death here, and we see that Jesus said that I've got to go heal him. I've got to go help him. Well, he didn't say heal him, but we all knew what he was talking about. He said, I've got to go take care of this situation, and they just couldn't believe that Jesus was going to do that. They couldn't believe that he was going to go into a place where he was not wanted, into a place where where he did not know what was going to happen. But I'm glad, thank God, that that is the God I serve, that we'll do that. Amen? The Bible tells us here, if we'll look, just in this chapter right here, the Bible calls him Lord, Jesus, God, the Son of God, Master, Friend, I Am, the Resurrection, the Life, the Christ, and the Father. Just in this chapter right here, we see some names of Jesus and what he is. And I'm glad, thank God, that we know that he's our Savior. Amen? I'm glad, thank God, that he is Jehovah, Messiah. He's my God and me. He's my king. I'm glad, thank God, that he is the bread of life. He's the lasting word. I'm glad, thank God, that he is the beginning and the end. He is my everything, thank God. I'm glad, thank God, for what he's done in our lives, of you that are saved here tonight. And can I tell you, if you're here and you're lost, that Jesus wants to save you tonight. I know that that's what he would love to do because he loved to save those of us that are here. And when he saved us, he changed our lives completely. It's the best decision you'll ever make. So we see here Mary's devotion, Martha's decision, and we see a man's death. We see the warning servant. We see the the worried sister. And then we see the wonderful Savior here in John chapter number 11. We see a sickness that happened here. We see that Lazarus was sick. An illness, and the Bible says that he did, that he died and was dead. And Jesus came along. Look with me, I've got to hurry up. Verse number 44, verse number 43. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. I'm glad, thank God, that night when he told me to come forth. Amen. Do you remember that night when Jesus came into your heart, when he spoke to you? Hey, I'm, I've heard it said, I heard a preacher say one time, if you didn't say Lazarus, and he said, come forth, the whole grave would have stood up and come out. Hey, he had to say Lazarus. Hey, I know that, that he, if he would have said, just come forth, the whole grave would have come up. You imagine that? I'm glad, thank God, that Jesus knows my name. He knew Lazarus by name, and he went to him. 
You know, so many times we've seen in the Bible uh, that, that, that God just spoke, that Jesus just spoke and he would heal from a distance. But he went and seen Lazarus, amen? I'm glad, thank God, we can come to the Savior tonight. I'm glad, thank God, that I serve a risen Savior and he loves me. And I'm glad, thank God, how he can change my life. And I'm glad, thank God, that he can seal us and I don't have nothing else to worry about. I, I can't lose my salvation. I'm sealed. You know, I can knock this thing over. I can turn it, turn it upside. Think about that. You can get knocked over. Anybody ever been knocked over? You ever been turned upside down? Look at that. Ain't a drop coming out. It ain't leaking. It's full. Are we full tonight? Are we full of the Holy Ghost? Are we full the same day, the same as we were when we got saved, that day we got saved? Are we still that full in our lives today? If not, I challenge you. I challenge you, would you come down and talk to the Lord tonight? Ask him to get you back to that point where you used to be. Let's stand, if you will, with every head bowed and every eyes closed.